LV County Championship First Division strugglers Durham again had a bad day with the bat in their hands, but they fought back well on a day in which 17 wickets fell in their game with title chasers Middlesex. Chris Rogers won the toss in the North East and would have been delighted with his new ball pair of Tim Murta and Stephen Finn. In his second over, Murta had Will Smith leg before without playing a shot. When things are going badly, you rarely get any luck, and Gordon Mutchell found that out when he was cruelly run out at the non-striker's end, courtesy of the boot of Murta. Ben Stokes, like Smith before him, was out before scoring, driving Gareth Berg into the hands of the New England Lion captain, Owen Morgan. And when Mark Stoneman nicked the impressive Murta behind, Durham were left reeling on 24 for four. In their last innings, they were dismissed for only 93 by Sussex, and they now needed the experience of Dell Benkenstein and Paul Collingwood to pay off. Collingwood pulled Toby Roland Jones for a six to bring up the Durham 50, but they were soon six down after Benkenstein got a shot off Roland Jones horribly wrong and gave Murta a simple catch. And Collingwood edged a quick ball from Stephen Finn to John Simpson behind the stumps. That left Durham on 54 for six and desperately in need of a partnership. That was left to Michael Richardson, who was in for the injured Phil Mustard, and Scott Borthwick, who at least were able to carry the total to 80. But a second successive double-figure score looked on the cards when Borthwick edged a cut off Murta behind. Callum Thorpe was bang in front to Berg. And Graham Onions gave Berg his third wicket and Simpson his third catch to make it 83 for nine. Durham did just make it to three figures thanks to a last wicket stand of 19 between Richardson and Chris Rushworth, proving as they did so that there were no real demons in this pitch. But when Richardson, on a top score of 22, was remarkably caught by Simpson after the ball fell from Sam Robson's grasp, Durham had been dismissed in just 41 overs for 102. Middlesex began this match as one of five sides who have a realistic chance of lifting the coveted title at the end of the season, and their captain Rogers saw this as the moment to seize the initiative in this particular contest. He looked busy at the crease as ever and was soon putting his side well on top. To their credit, Durham kept plugging away and were rewarded when Robson on seven totally misjudged the ball from Thorpe and left leg before with a total on 34. Rogers and Joe Denley then battled through to T, by which time Middlesex had made 63 for one to trail by only 39 with nine of their wickets in hand. Durham had no option but to fight back in the final session. And that's just what they did. Collingwood tossed the ball to Stokes, who then found the edge of Denley's bat at 67 for two. The ever-dependable Rogers did complete his sixth 50-plus score of yet another very profitable summer from the 34-year-old. And for a while, he found some decent support from fellow left-hander David Milan. But back came Durham with three wickets in 19 balls in which only three runs were added. Rogers on 59 edged onions to Stokes. Morgan was then trapped in front by Stokes for a duck. And Simpson was well held by Collingwood again off Stokes as it was Middlesex's turn to slip to 86 for five. Every single run was now becoming very important in what looks as if it's going to be a low scoring contest. So the stand for the sixth wicket between Milan and Berg was of great importance to their team. It only added 26, but that was probably worth a lot more. Milan then gave Collingwood his third catch of the afternoon as the batsman departed for 24. The performance of the day came from Berg, who was still there at the close of play, having earlier bagged three wickets. He received some necessary support from Ollie Rayner as they looked to bat their side to the close. Borthwick came on to bowl the last over of the day, and with his first delivery, he grabbed a catch off his own bowling to dismiss Rayner for 14. And with that, this important day was brought to an end. Middlesex hadn't done what they would have wanted, and instead closed on 144 for 7 to lead by 42, a lead which could already be a meaningful one given the events of this day. They will now look to Berg on 30 and to the tail to add more, before the bowlers get their chance again.